Okay, so now we've got the big panel connected up, all right? And you can see a little bit of a spark over there. Okay, this, let's measure what the voltage is here. And you can see I'm not too scared about this because only one single panel. And that is 35 volts. I don't know if you can see that on the, on the um, camera over there. 35 volts, one panel. Now, 35 volt panel is not gonna, use, is not gonna charge a 48 volt system, okay? Because you, you, you can't charge a 48 volt battery with 35 volt panel. Okay, <clears throat> it's, um, so what we're gonna do is, and you can see 35 volts, you can't really feel anything, all right? If you put it on your tongue, you're gonna feel it, but that's not what I'm gonna get to do, so you can just put it on your tongue, no, I'm just kidding. So, <clears throat> And we're going to see how many amps that is. And this is the first thing I ask people to do when they say, oh, we're getting, we're getting voltage from our solar panels. In other words, we're getting 37 volts, okay? 35, 37 volts. And then I ask them to touch the wires together. And they say, well, it's not charging. My, my, uh, let's say it's a 24 volt system so that you can charge with 37 volts, all right? As long as your solar panel voltage is higher than the battery voltage. So I ask them to pull the wires out the inverter and to do that if they don't have a meter. And if there's a big spark like that, you know there's power. If there's a little spark, and I'm gonna shade this panel, just, just to show you, and if there's a little spark like that, nothing, then you're gonna, well, no wonder you're getting no power through your inverter, right? There's nothing there. So now you need to figure out if it's a bad connection, if there's a bad solar panel, or whatever the case is. So just to be, I'm gonna just hold these two wires together, because only 37 volts. I'm gonna stick my clamp meter to DC amps, I'm gonna zero it, stick it through there, and I notice I'm getting only 2.7 you know, amps or so. The negative is just because the meter is connected the opposite way around. So seven amps, but if I move out the way, all right, I'm getting 8.2, but you saw the voltage drop as well when I stood in front of the panel, just, just out the sun there a little bit, Eric. Out the sun. Oh, out the sun. Okay. So we're getting 8.2 amps short circuit current. And then when I'm standing in the shade, you can see the amps drop down right to 1.6 amps. So you got to figure out if your panel's damaged. And a good way to see, come around, let's look at the back of this panel. A good way to see if your panel's damaged is in full sun, it shows you what the short circuit current is, 8.35 in this case, and you, we were getting about 8.35 amps when, it, when I was short circuited. So we know this panel is good. So if we're in full sun and we're getting less than that and, this, and the solar panel is perpendicular to the sun, then you know that there's something wrong with that panel. Okay, so that's the first thing. And what I would do is I would disconnect each. The easiest way to do this is I would go behind each panel in the array. Now make sure, obviously, that everything's turned off because this can be pretty dangerous. Disconnect the load. Um, you can get a tool for this, or I just use my fingernails over here. You gotta push those two little tabs in, and then you can pull the plug out. And I'll just hold that for a sec. Okay. Pull the plugs out. It's a little bit of a bugger. Okay, it's good, it's loose. So the quickest way is, Put your meter on DC amps. If you don't have a DC amp meter or clamp meter, go get one. An AC amp cl clamp meter that you sell at Home Depot are cheaper, but the ones that do AC and DC are more expensive. Don't get an AC one, it's not gonna work because solar panels are DC, okay? So <clears throat> people are gonna look at this and go, man, this is dangerous or, or it's redneck what you're doing over here. I really don't care because <clears throat> one day, when the systems come down, you're only going to have these basic tools to figure things out. And if, and if you only know how to do things the high-level method, you're not going to know how to do things the low-level method. So <clears throat> what you do is put these two panels together. Even though they warn you never to short this out on the MC4 plug, put the two together and measure to see what the amps are. So this panel right now, <clears throat> if I point it directly to the sun, you can see my amps come up to 8.3 amps right there. So I know this panel's good, okay? And now when you disconnect these plugs, just disconnect them quickly because, so you don't get an arc, all right? That's what they're trying to protect these little plugs from getting that little arc. So go through each panel and make sure it's giving you what the rated output is. <clears throat> if you had an array of 
10 or 12 panels, just do one at a time. See which one's causing the trouble. Just like you saw in the series panel connection, one bad panel in series is gonna affect the whole lot. <clears throat> the next question is what if I put, can, if I've got a, I've got a uh, 235 watt panel over here. Let's say I wanted to add another 28 watt panel, which what this is. <clears throat> and people go, okay, well, how do I add these two? thing is you cannot really okay because this panel only puts out one amp what you saw earlier so if I put a panel in series <clears throat> I'm gonna put this over here and I need a drink of water soon I'm gonna stick that on there come around the back so we can see what we're doing over here so I'm just running the extension wires on here and I'm not sure which is positive and negative Easy way to see which is positive and negative is just connect one on and see if that voltage is subtracted or added. Um, just hold those two wires there. So this one, this pa big panel was 37 volts. That one put out 22 volts. So if I'm, if I'm going to get 37 minus 22 over here, so I can see this one panel is, in, is subtracting from the other. So I need to swap its polarity. So I'll connect the positive wire to that one. So these are the two I'm looking at. So there we go. And you can see, obviously, the, the positive terminals connected on the negative. That's why we're seeing a negative voltage over there. So that's 56 volts. So 37 plus our 22 is 56 volts. So here we go, okay. So what's the big deal? We've increased our voltage, so we increased our watts. Um, but watts equals volts times amps. Let's see what happens to the amps. Okay, now we put a short circuit on there, put our clamp meter to amps, zero it over there. We could measure anywhere, <clears throat> and are we getting 1.2 amps? Why? Because the weakest link in the chain, which is that little Mickey Mouse panel, is limiting the output of this panel over here. So what we've essentially done over here is we've added 56 volts at one amp, We've essentially made a 235 watt panel plus a 22 watt panel into a 56 watt panel. Okay, instead of a 325 plus 22, which would have been, uh, I mean, 235 would have been 250 watts, we've essentially turned this into a 60 watt pair because the two are not matched. Okay, just like the weakest link in the chain is going to limit you. So, what you can do. If you were, if, let's say you, you had nothing else in life that mattered to you and you had to get this working and you had a few of these panels lying around. <clears throat> we know that each of these panels, we know that each of these panels puts out one amp. So if we put all three panels in parallel, like I showed you earlier, to give you three amps, three amps, and it's gonna add the voltage of 22 volts, okay? 22 volts plus 37 volts is gonna be, um, sorry, my, my mind went blank over there. So it's gonna be 56 volts. 56 volts times three amps is 150 watts. So even though we've added these three panels, this whole system's output is still gonna be only 150 watts. Okay. So we're going backwards by adding small panels and unless we can match. So we know that this solar panel puts out eight amps maximum. So if we had eight of these guys, put them in parallel, then we're making an eight amp link <coughs> in series with an eight amp link. Then we can essentially add, <coughs> this would be eight of these 22 watt panels would be 160 watt. In series with a 235 watt, we'd get 320 watts roughly double. So that's the only way you can get more power out of <coughs> putting dissimilar panels together. Okay. Okay, so the question was asked, how is the ideal method if I only had four panels? And pause there, let me go find a fourth panel. I found some more panels. So if we got four of these panels right now, it's possible to kind of maximize the output. And we just discovered now by putting these all in parallel, if they only give one amp each, that's only, only four amps, and that puts out eight amps. 
So we cannot put these panels in series together. In other words, a, <coughs> a link that that's, can handle four, let's say 400 pounds and a link that can handle 200 pounds together, the chain is limited to 200 pounds. But there is a way <coughs> to do this. We know that this panel puts out 37 volts and we know that each of these panels put out 22 volts. So we can kind of get the voltage similar by putting two panels in series. And if we put two panels in series, we're going to get roughly 44 volts. Okay, and we've seen that before. I don't need to show you that again. If I put two panels in series to make 44 volts, and they're going to give me one amp out, that's 44 watts. Okay, this one puts out 37 volts at 8 amps. If I had to put these two panels in series making 44 volts in parallel with this panel making 37 volts at 8 amps, <clears throat> we would roughly get uh, about 40 volts at 9 amps, 8 amps plus 9 amps. The thing is, you've got to kind of match the voltages together before you join them together in parallel. Now, that's where, where a combiner box comes in. The combiner box has two diodes <clears throat> in it, one for each series parallel string, <clears throat> which means that the panel with a higher voltage cannot feed back into the panel with a lower voltage. So <clears throat> it's like a one-way valve so that the two panels are not fighting each other. So <clears throat> if we had a combiner box feeding the system, we'd be able to get out uh, 9 amps at 40 watts would be roughly uh, 390 watts out of two of these panels and one of those.